the largest conurbation on the globe, which only nine months ago was devastated by a colossal earthquake which rendered hundreds of thousands homeless. And as they still seek their temporary accommodation among the ruins and the rubble of a tormented capital, they take solace in their football. The luckier ones making a pilgrimage to the Azteca to worship Diego Maradona or maybe watching on a shared television set. Just to be present at a World Cup final, a milestone in the life of a football aficionado. This is the 13th, and those unlucky enough never to have seen one in the flesh can nonetheless appreciate that it remains the unrivaled ambition of any professional to take part in the ultimate occasion of the global game. The Argentines have been there before in modern times in 1978, but not these players. The only survivor in the squad, Passarella, will not be taking part. But players, managers, coaches, football administrators, even reporters and commentators all know in their careers they won't be part of a bigger event than this. Argentina on the left in the blue and white stripes, their national colours, West Germany ordered to change today from their white shirts, they will be wearing green. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge crossing himself as he comes out at the head of the line, Diego Maradona alongside him as the opposite captain. I don't know how much of the noise at home you can appreciate, but to be here in the Azteca, you honestly can't hear yourself speak. The two teams who survive after this mammoth competition, and remember, this is the 52nd match that we've seen here in Mexico. La ceremonia protocolaria previa al partido en que serán interpretados por la banda monumental los himnos nacionales de ambas selecciones.
Deutschland, West Germany. They beat them in Berlin in 79, in Montevideo in 81, drew in Buenos Aires in 82, and beat them in Franz Beckenbauer's first ever match as manager in Dusseldorf in September 1984. So Argentina have the run of the more recent form book here, but they also have Maradona, and that may be far more significant. He's shaking hands with the three officials. The referee is Brazilian for the second World Cup final running, which has caused some comment. Romualdo Arpi, 47 years old. The linesmen are Eric Fredriksson of Sweden and Bernie Uloa of Costa Rica. And the man there, Brown, who uh, scored the goal that put Argentina in front. Really not necessarily deserved, in my opinion. It's quite strange. The Germans seem to have planned the thing methodically. They've got Maradona rattled, not on his game, and then they fell for a sucker punch, the old-fashioned cross to the far post. Schumacher missed it, it's true, but nobody was marking Brown in that position, and Beckenbauer at half-time will want to know why. But they've more problems than that to solve. I still think Argentina, having gained the initiative, will not let it slip easily. So at half-time, the final going the way of the South Americans, who obviously have by far the greatest share of support in the people, came to Mexico and settled here during the repression, during military rule in their country. So there's a strong Argentine contingent here in Mexico City, added to which, of course, many of the Mexicans themselves, when their own team were knocked out, decided to side with these surviving South Americans. The number of Germans in the crowd, around 4,000, we're told. Many of them surprised that their team has got even this far because there was a lot of pessimism, as you may know, about Germany's chances when the competition started. But the festive atmosphere has been prevalent throughout this World Cup. Wherever we've gone, whether it's been Guadalajara with Brazil, or up to Monterrey with England, or Leon, or Carretero, in Puebla, there's always been a great feeling of joy in the stands. And the public have made this a memorable World Cup as much as the players. The team's coming out for the second half. And just what do you feel West Germany must do, Jimmy, to turn this round? I really wouldn't like to be in their position at the moment not an easy one because they've got to stretch themselves they've got to attack they started the game actually by trying to put pressure on the argentine team um, feeling as i have felt all along that if there is a weakness it is that they are inclined to panic if they feel unsure at the back but they've remained well organized they've taken a, a lot of german pressure really uh, without wilting and uh, I don't see them at this stage with uh, a hot day, the sort, the hotter of the days that we get here. I don't see the Germans finding the physical strength and running power to come back and win this next 45 minutes. But that's a dangerous thing for anybody to say. Uh, alongside me, John is searching for the possible substitutions at half time while I'm talking away I should report for the second time during this competition I've been drenched by a certain brown liquid from an excitable commentator on the row above uh, it's not raining but something's happening which is very wet here at the moment but they're lining up now just to give John a moment more to check that no one's going to superimpose a player on him that he doesn't spot they're very proud about these things commentators you know don't like to miss out on any detail but it looks to me as if the players are as was Ruminick is still there I can see he's the most likely one I would think to be substituted for and indeed what a wonderful thing that the final should be such a climax to the World Cup competition there have been something like 2.4 goals scored per game in the final there were five and they came in such dramatic fashion the Argentines proved that they are not a one-man team although Maradona played his part here and there it was an heroic performance against the German side that wouldn't give way and wouldn't give beaten they were thorough they were methodical but in the end they were beaten by flashes of 
outstanding skill, which is the way in which games of football should be sold. And Maradona is lost in that crowd. It's a festival now, a glorification of a marvellous game of football, which 114,000 people have witnessed in the stadium and 500 million throughout the world. A wonderful occasion, uh, as sporting as one could have expected it to be on both sides. They competed to the full, they tried 